Hello, good afternoon. The Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham's, told frontline firefighters who attended the Manchester Arena bombing that they've nothing to apologise for. In an open letter, he says delays were caused by failures of process, leadership and culture. Well, our reporter Eunice Muller is outside Greater Manchester's Fire and Rescue Service headquarters for us this lunchtime. Uh, Eunice, Andy Burnham met firefighters yesterday. It seems he's felt he's had to say something. Steve, the way firefighters were asked to behave that night left many of them frustrated and angry. And in recent days, we've heard a number of them say they felt ashamed of that role, their role that night. And that's because it took them almost two hours to get to the scene when other emergency services were there within minutes. That was a decision made by senior staff. And today, Andy Burnham, in an open letter, has said that those frontline firefighters have nothing to apologise for. He says that no frontline firefighter in Greater Manchester has to apologise for anything. You and colleagues did nothing wrong on that night. In fact, I know that you were desperate to help, but were prevented from doing so by decisions taken above you. Andy Burnham says that it was all down, the failure was down to a process, leadership and culture within Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Service. And Eunice, Dawn Dox, the interim chief fire officer for Greater Manchester, has publicly apologised already. But there are questions being asked, aren't they, about the impact of having the firefighters there earlier and what that would have had. This Kerslake review, which looked at the response of the emergency services, was called for by, by the mayor, Andy Burnham. And he did that because a number of firefighters came to him um, with their concerns in the immediate aftermath and that of course led to the Kirkslake review and what the review said was that initial response rescuing those people from the foyer could have been a lot quicker perhaps if firefighters were there it couldn't say whether the victims some of the victims may have survived that's down to a coroner's inquest nevertheless this is what the fire brigades union told us today a lot of the firefighters on the stations, they actually heard the explosion and um, they, they knew what was going on. They, they were getting uh, text reports, they could hear radio reports. They knew that there were people uh, injured, dying and suffering and they were being stopped from going. So although the apologies uh, and the vindication that it wasn't their fault um, go some way to satisfying their concerns, um, it still, I don't think, will ever repair the damage that was done to, to the morale. Andy Burnham has ordered a whole service a review for the publication of this Kirkslake report and he makes it clear that he wants firefighters, frontline firefighters, to continue to speak out and he wants them at the heart of any review. OK, Eunice, thanks very much indeed. Eunice Muller there. Now, some other news this lunchtime. A man's been charged after children were assaulted at a mosque in Ro Rochdale. Abdul Raif, who's 52, has been charged with assaulting two boys aged 10 and 12 and other unidentified children. It follows an investigation into assaults on children at a mosque on Crawford Street. He's due to appear at Minchell Street Crown Court next month. More than 200 homes across Wirral are set to benefit from £670,000 worth of funding to improve flood defences. The Wallasey Embankment's one of 25 schemes receiving cash from the government. The work will involve reinforcing and extending the current rock barriers at the base of the embankment. Now, teenagers from deprived parts of the region are far less likely to get into medical school than their privately educated counterparts. According to Shared Health, the northwest based organisation set up to combat disparity, and they're helping A-level students to improve their performance during the application process. Mark Edwardson's been to one of the sessions in Rochdale. Dozens of Rochdale Sixth Form College students with a burning ambition to study medicine. I want to just support the community that I grew up in and like help better it and improve it. But figures suggest growing up somewhere like Rochdale could be a significant hindrance to their aspirations. A lot of people are sort of inhibited from doing what they want to do because of where they're from and you know if we all had access to equal sources of equal resources then we'd all be so much better off in the world. The sessions are about inspiring aspiration and students with the talent to make it at medical school. Kids uh, from disadvantaged backgrounds might not quite get the same kind of support and that's what we're um, doing today. The people who came the shared health thing, I want to maybe like start something like that so I can come back and do this for other people and show them what I've learned. All being well, in less than a decade some of these students could be qualified consultants or GPs. Mark Edwardson, BBC Northwest Today. 
And the first ospreys are expected to return to Cumbria over the next few weeks. The birds of prey have been travelling to the Bassenthwaite Lake area from Africa for the last 17 years. Special viewpoints to spot them when they arrive open to the public at Dodwood today. Now on to football now and in League One, Wigan Athletic are playing Oldham this afternoon. Current score is nil-nil. And in Super League, Salford Red Devils are playing Catalan Dragons, currently 12 points to four. Here's the bank holiday weather now from Alex Hamilton. Good afternoon. Well, Easter weekend is looking rather cloudy thanks to this area of low pressure. It's bringing some wet weather as well with it and perhaps even some snow over the higher ground. Looking at this afternoon, it's quite cloudy out there. There will be a few hints of brightness in places, but highs of only around 10 degrees Celsius, so it is on the cool side. We'll continue to see rain pushing in from the south and east over the course of tonight. Some heavy bursts in there at times. And again, the chance that some of those showers may be wintry over higher ground with lows of four degrees Celsius. We'll continue to see rain clearing tomorrow over the course of the day. There will be some bright spells where the cloud thins and breaks. Again, expect to see highs of only around nine degrees Celsius, so it's unsettled over Easter and quite chilly too. Well, that's it for now. We're back at 10 to 7. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.